In this video I'll show you how to perform the standard Pearson chi-squared test of association between uh, two categorical variables. So once you've used the pivot table facility to create a cross tabulation of two categorical variables here, then typically you might then want to test to see if there's any evidence of any association or dependence between the two variables. Um, Given that, of course, we're dealing with a sample here, any association that exists could be purely due to chance. So it's in, it, to test whether there's association in the population as a whole, you can start, carry out a standard statistical test of inference. And the test here is the chi-squared test. So what we're checking here, what, what we could test here is that does the sample data reveal any possible dependence between these two variables, such that choice of uh, social media site is influenced by or dependent upon the gender of the uh, respondent. Well, here I've only got 20 cases, which is too small really for a chi-squared test because that's a, a fairly large sample test. So what I'm going to do first of all is to increase the sample size here by simply, uh, in this uh, sample data, I'll simply copy the given 20 cases three more times to give me a, uh, a sample size of 80. So I'll do that first of all. I'll copy. Oops, sorry, made a mistake there. Let's try and make sure I get all of them. It's better. Copy and then paste. Then I'll do it again. Copy, paste, and one more time. Copy, paste. Okay, so now we have 80 in our data set. Notice the pivot table has not updated. You can easily do that by simply clicking in it to select it. That brings up, of course, the pivot table analyze menu. In there, you see there's an option to refresh. You can refresh just a single table or all the tables. I've only got one table here, so either will do. And as you can see, it then takes account of all 80 cases. Now, to carry out this test, you'll find the details in any statistical um, textbook, you calculate the expected value in each of these six cells, uh, given that there's no association that these two, uh, the two variables are independent of each other. The probability of them occurring is independent of each other. So, and then you compare that with the observed value. So what I'm going to do is to copy over here the data Just going to copy over as values just to give me the actual data like that. So now I will uh, calculate the expected uh, values. Now to do that, you for each particular cell, say this one, you multiply the column total by the row total uh, and divide by the overall total. So I'll do that for the first one here, so it's this, for this one it's the column total multiplied by the corresponding row total then divided by the grand total. And I'll do that quickly for all the other ones. Okay, so those are the expected values. Now Effective, what we're going to do is to compare those with the actual, with the observed values to see if there's any indication of, uh, of dependence. And what you in fact do is for each particular cell here, for these six cells, you take, you take the, you subtract from the observed value, the expected value, that difference is then squared and then divided by the expected value. You do that for each of the six cells here. That gives you six of these values, which you sum together to give you the chi-square statistic. So let me do the first one. So it's the observed value here minus the expected value for that cell, which is then squared and then divided by the expected value. Now, fortunately, Given the way the form has been set up, it's easy to do the other ones by simply, first of all, dragging across and then dragging down. 
and that gives me those six values. I can sum those to give me my chi-squared statist test statistic. So taking the sum of these, That's my chi-square statistic. Now, this has uh, degrees of freedom, which uh, in this test, the degrees of freedom is equal to the uh, number of rows minus one times the number of columns minus one. So in that case here, as you can see, we've got three rows. So minus three, uh, three minus one is two. Two columns here, two minus one is one. Two times one is two. So the degrees of freedom here is two. So remember that the degrees of freedom is the uh, number of rows minus one times the number of columns minus one. And you multiply those two numbers together. So the p-value here, I can use as I did before the chi.dist.rt function. There it is, chi squared rather. And of course it requires the test statistics comma, and then the degrees of freedom here. And that's my p-value. And as you can see, this is not, if we're assuming a 5% significance level, it's not less than 0 0.05. So we cannot reject the null of, of independence. So in other words, what we're, we're suggest, we're, our sample data here is suggesting that there's no dependence, no association between gender and uh, social media site. Um, so there, it doesn't look as if the choice of social media site is influenced by or dependent uh, on the gender of the respondent. So, okay, so that shows you how to carry out this chi-squared test. Now, it's a lot easier to do in a statistical package such as R or SPSS or something like that, but because you don't need to do it manually. In R, it's a simple command called chi-square. But it's possible, as you can see, to do it in Excel. It, it takes, you, you have to do it manually, but it, uh, it doesn't take a huge amount of time.